So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today I'm going to put a Christmas tree under the microscope. Well, of course, not the whole Christmas tree, but rather the needle or the leaf of a pine tree, not a pine tree, of a fir tree, Abies Nordmaniana. This is the name of this tree. It was discovered by Alexander von Nordmann back in the 19th century in the Caucasus region. A very popular Christmas tree because it doesn't lose the needles when the tree becomes dry. But of course, my interests were entirely entirely related uh, to microscopy so back at home I immediately plucked one of those uh, needles off and I started to prepare it and I started to microtome it and in order to do that I needed uh, a carrot as a specimen holder because what I want to do is I want to cut it into very very thin sections and then I'm able to put it under the microscope and I'm going to later on show you a couple of tricks that I used to improve also the image quality a little bit. The microtome that I have over here does contain a little clamp uh, that can be opened and closed so that it's possible to clamp the specimen, in this case the carrot, with uh, the needle. And then I was able to make very thin sections and in the meantime, uh, yeah, we were also starting uh, to clamp in the trunk of the tree into the tr Christmas tree stand. Here I'm preparing um, everything and uh, I also had to lower of course the specimen holder and then I was ready to make uh, the first cut and after every cut I was advancing um, the specimen outwards a little bit and uh, I had to make um, I don't know maybe 20 or 30 different sections and some of them were of better quality some of them were of worse quality but uh, the more sections that I made uh, the higher the probability of course that some of them are going to be uh, quite nice some of them were a little bit incomplete they were torn and ripped apart and others were a little bit too thick so a little bit of trial and error is necessary I then later on uh, placed uh, each one of them into a little bit of water to prevent them from drying out and uh, this also removed uh, some of the carrot pieces that might have disturbed a little the image quality and here they are uh, swimming in water and I'm washing them at the same time. I placed several of them on a microscope slide. Um, I placed a cover glass on top and then I had to add a little bit more water because some of them were a little bit too thick and uh, therefore there was uh, a lot of air beneath the cover glass. So I filled up everything with water again and then I placed everything of course directly under the microscope uh, for observation. Well, the first uh, impression was not very convincing, I have to tell you. Uh, the sections were all relatively dark. Um, yeah, not very interesting to look at. Uh, the contrast was not very high. And I was a little bit disappointed. Um, and therefore, I was thinking a little bit, well, maybe there are some ways to process the specimen a little bit to improve the quality. Here we're looking at it right now at a slightly higher magnification. Everything, everything does look a little bit brighter. But still, the image quality is uh, far from ideal. It's not a question of the image itself, but rather it, the problem is, is that there are too many pigments inside uh, this needle. And I therefore had to remove those pigments first, the chlorophyll in this case, to make everything a little bit more transparent. A little bit of concentrated alcohol does the trick. And uh, after about approximately 10 minutes, uh, I could see that many of the, much of the chlorophyll was removed already and everything was significantly brighter. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, everything was indeed a little bit also colorless. Well, of course, uh, what do you expect uh, if all of the chlorophyll is gone? So I tried now a different method. And uh, now I've uh, made, uh, also with the help of my microwave, uh, a very concentrated syrupy sugar solution. And this is now the solution that I placed the sections in overnight. And this caused uh, the water to be removed from the cells and uh, it caused the cell contents to shrink and therefore started to clear the specimen quite a bit. Yeah, you can see right now that uh, it's very thick and syrupy, very viscous. 
And under the microscope, I was quite happy to see that indeed this seems to be the best method to get uh, a nice cross section. You can see that uh, on the top surface, this is where there are many green cells, lots of chloroplasts, and in the center, um, yeah, the cells are less densely packed and therefore um, also a little bit more loose. And if you go very much uh, into the leaf, then you can see that uh, the central cytoplasm actually shrunk together and the cell walls, the individual cell walls now become much better visible. Now let's try a direct uh, image comparison here. Well, uh, on the left side, you can see the original section, pretty dark, uh, yeah, and uh, not very transparent. In the middle, this is the one that I treated with sugar solution. And on the right side, the one that I used alcohol to remove the chlorophyll and then also uh, sugar uh, to add a little bit of further clearing. And I think uh, that I personally like uh, the one only with a, with a sugar solution the most. So you can see that uh, by trying out a little bit and doing a little bit of experimentation, yeah, you can improve the image quality and the specimen quality quite a bit. Well, I think uh, you have now also a project over the Christmas holidays. And uh, well, if you're not watching this uh, over Christmas, then of course you can try it also during summertime. Uh, there are many different uh, leaves and conifers, of course, out there that you want to do that. And uh, I think uh, for today, I'm just going to leave it at that. Happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.